Okay, we're still talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus, and so far we have established this, that the integral from 0 to x of f of x dx is equal to a of x, the area under the graph of f, where a, we said where a is the antiderivative of f. a is the antiderivative of f, and it, and it looks like this. Okay, so we, we have some function f, and if we start at 0 and go up to some point x, and note the 0 and the x right there, then this area is given by this function which is the antiderivative of the original function. Okay, but what about this? Remember what we're trying to get to is this, some function and the area from one x value to another. So the area from a to b. Okay, so what about the integral from a to b of f of x dx, the area enclosed by those two x values on the left and right, and by our function f on the top and the x-axis on the bottom. Okay, here's how to think about this. First, just imagine your function here. And imagine some x value here, let's call it b, okay, and imagine the area from 0 up to that point, okay, starting at 0 and going to b. Well, the area there is going to be the integral from 0 to b of f of x dx. And according to what we've seen already, that will be a of b, where the area function is the antiderivative. So we'll draw the graph again, same function f, okay, so make another quick sketch down here, well let me try to duplicate it pretty well, okay, there's f, and imagine some x value here, x equals a, and imagine this area, okay, well that area will be the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx, and that will be a, the area of little a. So then hopefully you can see, just right here on these pictures, that if we're looking for the integral from a to b, so this area in here, that it would be all of this area minus that. And if you don't see that, we can put them together on one graph. So on the last one, draw your picture here and draw x value of a and x value of b. And the integral from 0 to b is all of this, and the integral from 0 to a is all of that. So, so if we take all of this area, and then subtract this piece, so minus this, then what's left is this area here that we're looking for. So we can write the integral from a to b of f of x dx is going to be a of b minus a of a. Okay, now one of the things to take note of is that the constant of integration is gone. Remember, the area function is the antiderivative, and when we take an antiderivative, or an integral, we end up with the big plus c, the constant of integration. So if I, if I really am saying that the integral of my function is a, then this would really be a plus c, and so would that. But watch this, if we have a of b, let me scoot that over just a little bit, if we have a of b, plus c, that, minus a of a plus c, can you see that those c's will cancel out, the plus c minus the plus c, those are going to be gone, so we're just going to have a of b minus a of a, that's why the constant of integration doesn't show up when we do the fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluating from one x value to another, the c's cancel out.
And then the last step is just to note that this area function, we don't typically call it A, we just typically, typically call it G. So we commonly write this as this, the integral from A to B of f of x dx is equal to g of b minus g of a. And then I'll note this one last time, where g is the antiderivative or the integral of f. And that is it, the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I would argue that this geometric presentation that I've given of the fundamental theorem establishes the theorem just as cogently as an algebraic proof, and hopefully gives you an intuitive understanding for all of the details involved as well. So there you, there you have it, the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is an important topic, and if you're preparing for an exam, this is an important topic also on, um, on tests and on AP exams. So we'll come back next and work a whole bunch of examples using the theorem.